So Chris, we're working on your centurion here. We've already established your base colors. We've already established the, shade, the shading that we're using. Now we're going to move on to the white color here, the cream color, and how we're going to paint that. Just like we talked about in part one, where the, sha the shadow is along the edges, we're going to kind of do the same thing here, where these plates here that are white are going to be darker than these plates here on the top that are white. And then we're also going to put some color in those um, seam lines between, or those panel lines between the panels to emphasize them a bit. Okay, so. Um, if you remember back to Kane, when we painted Kane last time, the white recipe we used on the inside of the cloak is the same white recipe we're going to use on the Centurion. It was base coated in Menoth white base and um, Hammerfall khaki was the first shade coat and that was followed by Crixbane highlight with the most extreme shadow being Crixbane base and then um, Menoth white highlight being the highlight on top of all that. So uh, we'll go ahead and um, get some uh, Hammerfall khaki onto my dry palette here. You guys are hearing my kids running around upstairs. Sorry about that, I know it's kind of loud. So I've got some Hammerfall khaki on my um, on my wet palette here, and we're just going to two brush blend it the same way we have everything else. Uh, but we're starting with the shadow down here at the bottom. And we're actually going to pull that Hammerfall khaki pretty far up, so there might be multiple applications of it here as I'm pulling it up the up the side. And unfortunately, my camera doesn't pick up white as well as it does some of the other colors. So the contrast isn't quite as, as smooth there on them. The Hammerfall khaki kind of serves as a intermediate shade tone on the Menoth white, or the Menoth white base. Okay. Let that dry for a minute. Let me get the Crixbane highlight ready to go. That's Troll Blood highlight. Crixbane highlight, there we go. That'll be the next shade color that we're gonna use. This one you'll see a little better on the camera. It's just got a little more, a little more darkness to it. thing on the other side. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. that off and start that one over. There you go, that's a little better. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to set this aside, let it dry for just a moment. Take a look at a fist here. We're going to do the same thing. These edges here are where the shadow is going to be. In the center, where the highlight is going to be. And again, we're going to take the Hammerfall khaki. And that's going to come out pretty far because that's more or less the, the mid tone color. Same thing over here. Nope. Sorry, guys. Got a screen there on that one. Same thing. Grab the uh, knee pads, knee armor plates. Okay, now on this one, the shadow is going to be right through here with a pretty big highlight right there and a pretty big highlight at the top. If you look at it from the side, you can see that that's, that's where, well, in fact, you can even just see on the camera there, almost naturally where that, that shadow is going to be placed. So we're going to put the Hammerfall khaki. I'll put a line of it right there. Okay. And then the same thing again. There. And just soften the edge of it so it's not such a hard transition. Go on to the next armor plate for the knee. Do it in reverse order this time, just to mix things up. that one done. And then the last place to do some, or two more places to do some white, the shield. What's going to make this shield interesting too is you've got all these coils here. Okay, so that's always going to be fun. We're going to have to go back uh, once this two brush blending is done and actually um, pick those coil details out. And get the OSL effect going on them. Okay, on the other side now.
last ones that we're going to do here, I'm actually not going to do right now, and that's the um, these plates here. These plates go on the the chest of the centurion, just below where the head attaches. I'm not sure of the orientation on them, so um, I'm going to glue them in first, and then we'll we'll paint them. But I'll do that. That'll be one of the last things that we do, Chris. All right, our hammerfall khaki is dried here and here. Okay, or excuse me, the Crick's Bane base. Um, I want to bring it out just a little further on this side. Uh, not Crick's Bane base, Crick's Bane highlight. My apologies. And I'll smooth this one out just a little bit more here. almost think I've carried the shadow up a little too far there on this side too so we're going to work a little bit more a little of, the, little of the base color back into that let me get some men off white base here and we can wet bl uh, two brush blend that in as well we don't have to try and feather that or fade that in so I'm just going to add that right there. That's going to that's going to take a couple of coats to to get right, I think. But that's how this goes. You go back and forth, you you slowly influence one color in the next. But that's looking better. But yeah, I definitely need to come down here on this side. I can I can see it now. I'll let that dry just a little bit longer. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna just clean this edge up here. There was a little bit of overspray that had gotten on from uh, the airbrush, so I'm just Cleaning that up. Okay. I think there was some on this other arm too, yeah. A little bit right there. Good. So come back to the body now. Pull this white just a little further down. Now something else you can do that's kind of fancy too is you could actually put a, a highlight at the top edge of each of one of these plates and slowly build that transition that way too. I don't think I'm going to take this gray here down any further, okay? But we will use the Crixbane base though as the color in between those panel lines all the way around. So let me let that dry while we do that. Let's come back to these knee plates and add in the Crixbane highlight uh, 
to create the the shadow effect. Pretty small drop of it. I don't want it to be too pronounced. All right. That turned out pretty good there. Same thing now on the other armor plate. Just a dot of it. Again, I don't think I'm going to go too much darker on that white there. There we go. And then we'll come to the hand guards now. And we're going to keep that Crixbane highlight centralized pretty tight along this edge. This is a really good, really good color too for um, you guys who want to paint Minoth in the traditional scheme. Uh, this white is pretty. This recipe is pretty close to the the recipe they use in the studio on the white. See the transition from shade to, to, to the base color on that arm. Come back now to this other arm now. Do the same thing. Same thing going here. All right. That white's there. That white there is about done too. Um, that's it for the white pieces there. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to pull out my wet palette here. We're going to uh, do a little black lining and do a little bit of a little bit of highlighting now. Um, these two armor plates here, we're going to want to keep those pretty white. And then some white here, then maybe just a touch of it there on that one. So using the Men Off White highlight, and on your wet palette, I'm going to mix some up that's uh, fairly, fairly thin. A little thinner than that. That's good there. And then just pull your, your highlight to the front on this one. the direction you want to pull your your brush in. That's what I mean to say. Towards the front of the of the jack. Just 
see if I can pull some of that glare off. If I pull back a little further, you can see the transition in the light there. It's come, it, it looks pretty good. What'll help it pop even more is um, when we add in some of the black lining effect. That'll, that'll do a lot for it. Okay. And then let's take the uh, Kirksbane base now. paint those panel lines right in between these plates. When you go to do this, make sure you're focusing on controlling your breathing. Okay, You don't want to hold your breath, but you don't want to be breathing heavy either. Just focus on controlling your breaths, slow steady breaths, and focus on keeping that hand nice and steady and just pull the line, just like that. Okay. Same thing on this side now. top here and then what you want to do is pull, pull these lines down and finish that detail off there you go um, now what I want to do too, take some of this base color, Crick's base color, and just paint the inside of this cowling here. And then kind of back in here too, behind where the head is going to be. That way there's a nice dark shadow back there. So when you put the head in, you don't have to worry about painting behind it because you will have already done that. Another advantage to painting a miniature in pieces like that. It doesn't have to be a smooth coat, you know, it doesn't have to be a solid clean coat. Just enough to get put that color there and give that impression. Alright. Another place that I'm gonna do this line here is going to be right here on the bottom edge. Of where this gold trim meets these white plates. And then also if you flip it upside down right here as well. This goes a long way to, to making a model look clean and finished, Chris. And I'm not too worried about what it looks like on the gold right now, because we haven't started the gold yet. So anything I mess up there, we can just clean up later. There you go. Look at the difference that that black lining makes. Look how it makes it pop out more, okay? How it makes it be more bold and more defined. That's what you're looking for when you're trying to recreate a clean look on an army, okay? Let's go ahead and do the same thing now. Black lining around this blue area here with um, using Exile Blue and I am out of Tharmar Black, Thamar Black, so I'm going to be using Vallejo Black. But you can achieve the same effect uh, with the Thamar Black as well, Chris, so don't worry about uh, 
color differences there. You can see the dot of blue, exile blue that I added to my wet palette. And you can see the size of the very small dot of black that I added next to it. We don't need a lot here, you just need enough to, to darken that blue um, to create a nice dark shading color. I would not recommend using exile blue because exile blue is, um, excuse me, uh, coal black for this because coal black is a different shade of blue altogether. You want to be using the exile blue with the dot of black. Okay, load your brush up, wipe off your excess, and Follow that line now. Again, don't worry if you mess up the gold. The gold we're going to go back later and clean up. Okay? What we're focusing on right now is making this top armor plate look finished. And I could probably even have done just a little more black and been and it had been fine. But we're just gonna stick with this this for now. Okay. There you go. You can see the difference that uh, that, that makes. Goes a long way. Let's come back to uh, these armor plates here. Let's add our highlight in. Good. good. Move on to the wrist guards on the hands, on the forearms. Who's that at work watching at work? Nice. Someone asked in chat wherever if if anyone's painting while they're watching, and some guy writes down, "I'm watching at work on my phone. I want to work where he works." <laughs> Maybe he's just on break.
Okay, those white pieces are done. Now we come to the shield. This one's going to be a little more tricky. Oh, and we didn't add the uh, Crick's Bane highlight shadow in on this guy. So let's do that real fast here. that side. Okay. that sit there for the shadow to thin out and dry. As far as the white highlight goes here, we're going to really emphasize the white on this base of the the shield. So the support you guys have given for the people that have been watching on a regular basis, I, I sure really appreciate it, guys. It's uh, it's nice to get the questions. It's nice to get the feedback. Uh, this has been great. It's been something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and, and I'm grateful that it's, that it's happening now. But, uh, you know, tell your friends about it. Tell your, your painting buddies about it. You know, share it on your Facebook page. But, you know, whatever you need to do. Let's spread the word. I'd love to have, you know, a ton of people on watching. It'd be great to, to get to that point. So so make sure you're, uh, you're telling everyone you know about it. We'll let that white dry up a bit more before I work it any further. Uh, let's look back at the body again. After that black lining has dried now, you can see how it all looks. It looks really good. We can do the same thing actually all the way around the Cygnus here. Um, in fact, let me see if I can get in tight enough to do that with the camera in the way. Again, if I get up on top of the metal there, that's okay. That's okay if you're doing if you, that happens to you too, Chris, when you're painting. You just clean it up. That's all you got to do. Okay, that whole outside edge is done. Now I got to do the inside of the uh, the wings there and around the head. That's always the tricky part on 
on the Cygnus for the for Signar, the Swan, painting this inside edge. Okay, boom, that looks pretty good. See the difference that that makes when you do that? Okay, let's see how this white looks. All right, actually I'll give that just a few minutes longer. We're gonna add some more black lining here uh, to put right there on the line between the, uh, the silver and the blue. Okay, see how that looks. And if you look on the inside there of the yeah, right there you can see how unclean that whole area is. So we're going to, where the wrist guard and the forearm plate join. So I'm going to do the same thing here with this blue. I'm just going to add that in there. To clean it up, darken it up, all that stuff. Uh, same thing here on the bottom. Like so. See how much that cleans that up and tightens things up a bit there. Let's see where we at time wise. We're uh, about an hour and forty minutes in. Okay, doing good. Clean this up here. Edge. That one got a little crazy, but good thing I can still go back and clean that metal up. pretty good. Let's see where that shield is at now. If it's dried enough for me to move on with it. I think it has. So we're going to add some white now. Up in here. Gosh, this camera hates picking up white. Jeez. It just all looks washed out and glared out right now at this point on my screen. I guess that's the give and take with the 
doing this live. Let me just check a setting real quick and see if that cleans it up at all. Yeah, that looks a little better. do now I've got this shield here I'm going to take moral white and I'm going to just paint the coils on this shield I'll be answering questions in about 10 minutes guys I know that there was an airbrush question earlier um, I see there's one about the wet palette so um, I'll be taking the time to do that here in just a minute. Um, but Grim Grim Wolf, I think that's uh, I think that's Dan from the Geek Garage, if I remember right. Um, if you're not on air when I answer that question, I'll I'll shoot you an email, bud. Okay, so I'm just going to use the Moral White now, and. Uh, just paint these coils here for the OSL that I'm going to do on them. I don't like to overdo uh, glowing effects, OSL effects. I like to keep them pretty, pretty simple. So uh, basically, for me, it's a paint the area white, wash it with the glow, and then. Uh, pick out some of the the details in white again. I keep it uh, I keep it simple. I don't I don't like the the real flowing glowing type effect. You know where everything is is affected by it. I just I don't know personal preference I suppose, but I just don't think it translates well on miniatures. Oh, Randon. Yep, sorry about that, bud. <laughs> Not Dan from Geek Garage, Randon from Geek Garage. It just looks horrible on the screen. I probably should move on to something else, guys, because it's so bad. I wonder if I take a light source off. No, that's still just as bad. Okay, so what I do for the OSL, particularly the Signar Glow, um, that's brown ink. We're not using brown ink. I use turquoise ink, paint the area white, and then wash it with turquoise ink. You're going to want to dilute it about 50%. So, drop of uh, turquoise to about a drop of water. I'm just using some water pellets, water beads that are on my wet palette here. And then just flood the area. with the ink. Voila. And then after it dries, you can go back and pick out the high points. Um, 
on the coils with just straight white. That works really well also. get any of your ink spilling over at this point that's okay just go back clean it up don't stress about it too hard some in here now that white back up when I'm done here. Alright, so we'll let that dry for a bit. Come back and clean it up a little bit more. Um, let's see here. Let's go on to a wash. Let's do a wash. What I want to do, what I'm going to recommend, Chris, for uh, all the metal areas is not the P3 armor wash, but I'm going to recommend the Secret Weapons armor wash. It's a good product, covers really well, um, dries fairly quick and even and uh, it, it'll it produce a nice overall effect. Grab a brush here for my washes. It's got a kind of almost a brown hue to it, um, whereas the P3 armor wash has almost like a blue or a purple hue going on and I think that you've got enough cool colors on here that uh, doing it something a little warmer will actually complement uh, a little nicer with what we got going on and I think the, the P3 armor wash will just be too much cool happening so you can already see the effect you're getting there and, and it's actually pretty nice. I, I kind of like that. When you're applying a wash, um, everyone has their own way of doing it. Try not to let things pull too much you know, because that'll, that'll create some unevenness in the effect. You're wanting it to be just kind of a nice even consistency all the way around. just don't let everything kind of pull up in one area like like see this right right underneath here that's probably a little too much so I'm just gonna pull a little bit of that off that's definitely too much right there so just pull that off Get the smokestacks there that gold plate there too same time and there's your wash on that one 
And what we'll do is we'll just do a, a very light dry brush on it, and that'll pull out a lot of the details there. We don't need to spend too much time weathering the metals. I don't think it needs too much of it on this because we don't want them to look overly, overly dirty, right? We're going for a clean look on your army. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's take a look at the insides of the arms here. Adding this wash to that area. All right. Grab the other arm. Add this layer of wash on. And I actually need to touch those plates up so we I won't do those right now. But I will add that one right there. Okay. And then on the armor knee armor plates, we'll just add a little bit. shield see that would be an example of too much pooling okay you don't want it that you don't want it that batch because when it dries that's gonna leave some some nasty little rings okay there's the wash on that one we didn't hardly talk about the uh, the arms today, but here they are. I'm just going to apply that one all around. All right. Do the other one here. All right about two minutes guys once uh, the delay catches up with me here or once it catches up with you I'll be gearing down towards uh, wrapping this session up so if you've got questions make sure and get them into chat and I will do my best to answer them the last few minutes before I do the wash on the on the face here I do want to add the white inside the eye in preparation for some ink that I'll put in there for the glowing effect. And anything that, uh, that gets on the gold, I'll just clean it up because that's just the base coat at this point. So there we go, so that I it's going to be ready to go here in just a second. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up uh, this paint cast. This will be put up on YouTube, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, it'll be put up as uh, two parts. It'll be um, Centurion Part 1, Centurion Part 2. And... Um, the idea will be that it will just be in hour increments so that uh, it's a little bit easier to view. Um, I will be coming, be back on air Tuesday night where hopefully I'll be starting some cricks up that night. The um, I'm hoping also between now and uh, uh, the, my next broadcast to actually get one more um, Centurion Part 3 in, where where I cover some more details and, and wrap this up for Chris. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, in the meantime, let's uh, take. I'm going to take a look in, ch in the chat here and see uh, see what kind of questions you guys might have and see what I can do to answer them. So 
scrolling back up here, see if I can find the question on airbrushing. Um, okay, so Tadgo asked, do you ever use airbrush lube on your airbrush? The answer to that question is yes, I do. Um, just seeing real quick if I've got it here close by. If not, I'm going to have to show it to, to you guys later. But I use um, Super Lube that's made by Iwata. comes in a little blue tube, and um, it's called Super Lube. Um, it will not interfere with uh, acrylic paints, okay? And um, a little bit of it goes a long way. Uh, one of these days when I do some airbrushing, I'll actually talk about um, airbrush maintenance a little bit more and... and um, break down how I clean them and how I take care of them and stuff so um, but yes I do use um, lube I use the uh, the airbrush lube um, super lube is what it's called from a lot of um, let's see here transferring paints to dropper bottles I did get an email um, from uh, a client that I'm actually going to be doing a, um, a paint cast video for here probably at the end of the month and he had a question about um, putting the little lava bead agitators in with, uh, with the paint bottles. Um, you know, I, what I do is I have the bottle empty. I, think I, I don't think I have an empty bottle currently. Um, I have the bottle empty. I put two agitators in it and then I transfer the paint over. Um, you may not hear the agitators moving around when you shake them up, but they're in there and they're doing their job. So um, you shouldn't worry too much about that. It'll be just fine. Um, let's see here. Do you use two brush bl uh, blending when you wet blend? Yes, I do, Randon. Um, uh, let me see here. What I can do real quick, just to give you a quick demonstration of it since you missed it. I've got a paint card here. Let me focus in on that. Get my camera right here. Let me set up my, um, my zoom here, guys. Give me just one second. Okay, there's the paint card. And we're in focus now on that. All right, two brush blending, just real quick demonstration of it. I'm going to use P3 Coal Black to demonstrate this. Um, when you're two brush blending, you do not want to use a wet palette. You want to make sure and use a dry palette. Um, the idea is you have two brushes, okay? You have one that does the application and one that does the blending, okay? You basically are going to put a drop of paint where you want it and then come back with your blending brush moving back and forth, pushing into the paint, and then slowly pushing, pulling out, okay? So there is a drop of paint. Um, just to be accurate to what I described, you use the brush to apply your paint where you want it to be. Then using your blending brush, you start swishing on the surface before you get to the paint. You push into the paint and then slowly pull out. And you can see the fade that that creates. And that, in a nutshell, is two brush blending. Um, my blending brush is moistened with um, saliva from my mouth. I've got a clean uh, jar of water that I keep here that I rinse it with frequently. You don't want the paint to build up on there. And then also on your application brush, too, you don't want the paint to uh, build up on that as well, so keep that one clean and drying, um, clean and rinsed on a regular basis. So I hope that answers your question, Randon. There was also another question about what paint palette, uh, what palette am I using? I picked it up at Michael's. Um, I think it was like eight dollars, and it included the the sponge with it. Um, Masterson's Stay Wet Handy Palette. There you go. That's what it's called. I've also used it, as you can see, as an airbrush palette from time to time. <laughs> um, and then the last question. So it looks like you have a cup of urine on your desk, bro. 
Is it urine? Is it apple juice? I think this is what you guys are referring to right there. And yes, it does have a slightly yellow urine color to it. Um, no, this is not urine. No, it is not apple juice. Um, this is actually natural terpenoid that you can pick up at Michael's. Um, here's what the bottle looks like. I've got it on my shelf here. Let me grab it. Hold on just one second, folks. That's what the bottle looks like for the natural terpenoid. Okay, I picked this up at Michael's. What I use this for is I will clean my brush, my brushes with brush soap, brush soap about once a week, sometimes twice a week. This is the brush cleaner I use. Um, let me focus that in there. That's the brush cleaner I use, okay. Um, every one to two weeks, I clean my brushes with this. However, after every painting session, I will um, rinse my brushes in this. And since we're wrapping up this painting session, I can show you guys what I do. Take the brush, I put it in there, just past the ferrule. Okay, you can see how, how deep I went with it. And I'll just kind of give it a swish around. And then I gently wipe off the excess. And then drag it across a paper towel to reform the point. Like so. And then I hang my brushes up. I hang them in a vertical position like that. And then they dry. And um, the terpenoid um, cleans out the any acrylic deposits that are left behind. And then also um, conditions the bristles and helps them be reformed. So and then there's that one. Reform that bristle. That bristle and then hang it, hang it up to dry. Um, the terpenoid is non-toxic, non-flammable. Um, it is an oil paint cleaner, but can be used for the acrylics as well. Um, if you're going to use these brushes to two brush blend with, uh, for example, like I would be doing probably later tonight when I go work on some of my own stuff, you want to make sure and rinse them out because natural terpenoid does not taste very good. It's not toxic, so it's not going to kill you, but it leaves a pretty nasty taste in your mouth. So, um, so it looks like that was all the questions um, that were in chat tonight. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. When this gets posted up to YouTube, make sure and head over there to like that, like like the video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to uh, my Twitch channel here by just uh, hitting the subscribe button down below. If you do have any questions, remember to hit me up at redmodeling at gmail.com or on Facebook at redmodeling or Facebook forward slash redmodelingpaint. Um, until we see you guys on Tuesday, have a great night. Keep your brushes moving, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Take care, everyone. Good night.